1 Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 3, uh, I want to highlight in your hearing verses 8, 9, and 10. Now, I'm going to be reading from the, the Good News translation. It, it, it may be a little different than what you have in your hand, um, but I believe whatever translation you have, we'll all get there together. Again, that's 1 Samuel chapter 3. They're standing all over the house. Amen. We stand in honor of reading God's word. If you can stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Is this thing on? If you can stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, how are you going to give more credit to your uncle, Uncle Sam? If you can stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, you, you, you can stand for the reading of God's word. If you choose not to stand um, at the little church I pastor, I ask my people to elevate their hands so we'll know that you're not acting funny. Um, you, you're on the Lord's side with us, so I don't want to stand. You ain't got to stand, uh, but just lift your hand and let us know you ain't acting funny. You, you're on the Lord's side with us. For first, first Samuel chapter 3, uh, verses 8, 9, and 10. Again, this is the, the GNT translation. It says, the Lord calls Samuel a third time. He got up, went to Eli and said, you called me and here I am. Then Eli realized that it was the Lord who was calling the boy. So he said to him, go back to bed. And if he calls you again, say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel went back to bed. The Lord came and stood there and called as he had before. Samuel, Samuel. Samuel answered, speak, your servant is listening. Amen. I, I want to tag this text with a topic, I'm hearing things. Help me preach my little sermon. Look at somebody and tell them I'm hearing things. Tell, tell somebody else I'm hearing things. Hey, amen. Be seated in the presence of the Lord. I'm, I'm hearing things. I, I, I know I'm going to get at least one amen for this whole sermon. Tell somebody I'm hearing things. Um, um, Lady Elise, a few years ago, there was a viral phenomenon that swept across the world. It was a audio recording. And when it was played, some people heard one name and then some people heard another name. Um, I heard the recording and and one city, I know what I heard. And, and I was wondering, Pastor Hollis, how did the people who did not hear what I heard, how in the world did they hear what they heard? Oh, okay, maybe, maybe some of you can help me. Um, you, you remember the recording was uh, about a six-second clip and, and, and it asked you, what name do you hear? And when you heard the recording, you heard Laurel. Or you heard Yanni. Some, some of y'all remember? It, it, once you listened to it, you heard Laurel or you heard Yanni. And I know what I heard. And it was amazing to me that, that all of us can be hearing the same thing. But then we all hear something different. A ask your neighbor, what, what are you hearing? A ask, ask somebody else, what are you hearing? See, see, in this world where a lot of messages are being spread, in this world where a lot of words are being said, you must make sure that your ears are in tune with God or you'll be led in a way that you have no business going. Somebody say, get in tune with God. 
Yeah, yeah, get, 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 get in tune with God. And, and, and I discovered that, Pastor Hollis, in that, in that audio recording, they had on the screen which word, which name do you hear? Laurel Yanny. It was already presented to you what options you could expect to hear. Can, can I suggest to you this morning that it's hard to hear God's voice when you've already decided what you want him to say? Y'all a little quiet over there? It, it's hard for you to hear God's voice when you've already told yourself what you want him to say. And it's interesting how all of us can be listening to the same thing but then all hear something different. Why? I'll tell you why. Because it has to do with your sound card. Somebody say my ears. It has to do with your sound card, your, your ears, your brain, and your experiences. So, so, so check this out. God wants to make sure that you and I are living a life that we know we got to make sure that our ears are not clogged up with so much of the world that we'll end up hearing the voice of God. In, in, in Revelations chapter 2, Revelations chapter 2, verse 19, that's why Jesus says, he who has ears, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. So one city your, your pastor heard from God, and he thought it very important that in this season of your life, in this season of this church's existence, that you and I pay close attention to what we're listening to because what we hear and what we listen to determines how we live our life. You ain't saying nothing. What we listen to determines how we behave. What we listen to determines how we move. Oh, 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 okay, you don't want to help me, so let, 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 let me help you help yourself. Let the right song come on. So, so, some of you, some of you who are who, who are who are not uh, 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 public personas, but when that right song come on, you at the dry, you at the red light in your car, and everybody know you don't know the words, but you. It, it's possible to have ears and still. Not here. How, how many of you, be honest, how many of you this morning hear voices in your head? Okay, y'all going to be a tough crowd. Because you're too busy trying to act holy that you ain't being honest. How, how, how many of you, be honest, you hear voice? well, let me try it another way. How many of you talk to yourself? Every hand in this room should have went up. Every hand in this room should have went up. Watch this. You talk to yourself and you listen to yourself. It's all right to talk to yourself and listen to yourself, but if you tell yourself to repeat what you said to yourself, man, you got a problem. <laughs> and, and what I'm trying to say to you is that there is no voice you will hear more than the own one that you hear in your head, y'all. <laughs> and it's important that we pay close attention to the voices that we're really listening to. Why? Because those voices really do determine how we are to live. Can I tell you that God wants to talk to you? I, I, I wish you would talk back to me. I, I say God wants to talk to you. And maybe you're thinking, no, Pastor Walker, God only talks to pastors. He only talks to preachers. He only talks to people who got their I's dotted and who got their T's crossed. He only talked to righteous, religious people. But can I tell you, God wants to talk to you. He, he wants to talk to you, and he wants to have a relationship with you. God, Hear me, hear me. God wants to have a personal relationship relationship with you. By, 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 by him having a relationship with you, you will have fellowship with him. 
This personal relationship produces a intimate fellowship, and then what happens in any good relationship, there will be communication. Uh-oh, uh-oh, wait a minute. What's the number one reason why relationships don't work? They gonna act like Pastor Hollis, I'm not preaching, but I, I, I promise you I am. How, how many women in here, that's the first thing you told him, you need to talk to me. A relationship without fellowship, what is a relationship without fellowship? What is a relationship without communication? And most relationships suffer due to a lack of communication. And God, God doesn't necessarily want to speak to you uh, about, about eating raisin bran. But, but he does want to speak to you about raising them brats. I, I mean, raising them babies. God, God, God wants to speak to you so that you'll make sure that a voice is leading you to where he says you're supposed to go. J J John chapter 10, verse 27, John 10 and 27 says, Jesus says, my sheep. Here, my, I, got, I got about three Bible readers in here. I'm trying, I'm trying to find number four. My, my, my sheep hear my voice, and, and, and I know them, and, and they follow me. He said, my sheep hear my voice, and, 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 and they don't negotiate with me. <laughs> my sheep hear my voice, and they don't tend to bend the rules a little bit. My sheep hear my voice, and they don't turn to Monty Hall and say, God, let's make a deal. But my sheep hear my voice, and they what? Follow. At, Lord, Lord, have mercy. God is speaking, and his sheep hear his voice. And it doesn't say that the sheep do what they want to do. But the sheep hear his voice, and they follow him. So when my ear, somebody say my ear, when my ear is inclined to hear God's voice, it means I'm being obedient. Someone who hears God obeys God. It's real simple. It's real simple. Check this out, Jeremiah 7 and 24. Listen to Jeremiah 7 and 24. The people of God became stubborn in their hearts. They did not incline their ear to God, and they moved backwards. I, I, I want you to progress to the point in your relationship with God that you are able to shout and rejoice just simply on the words that you read. Before a preacher or a teacher break it down to you, I want you to be able just to rejoice on the words that you read. Let's read it again. The people of God became stubborn in their hearts. Why? Because they did not incline their ears to God, and they moved what? <laughs> you, you, you mean to tell me what I hear will either help where I'm headed, or it'll become hazardous to where I'm headed. You, you mean to tell me what I hear can be helpful to where I'm headed, or it can be hazardous to where I'm headed? Ask your neighbor, are you going forwards or backwards? Wrong neighbor, they ain't talking right to find somebody else. And ask them, are you going forwards or backwards? It's, uh, can, can I give you one more? In, in, in the Good News translation of that same Jeremiah 7 and 24, one city, look what it says. My people will not listen to me. They keep doing Whatever they want to do. That don't sound like you. That sounds like the person who wearing your shoes and sitting in your seat. Now, I, I, I know you don't want to admit that that's you. My people will not listen to me. 
they keep doing whatever they want to do, following their stubborn and evil hearts, they became worse instead of better. It's important. It's crucial. Why? Because you can be moving forwards or you can be moving backwards based on how much you listen and obey to what God has to say. If you're writing something down, write this down. The failure to follow can forfeit your future. Preach, Clint Walker. I'm trying the best I can. The failure to follow can forfeit your future. If you can't say out, say amen, but you ought to show, say something. I, I, I don't want to make this long. Um, in context, other texts, um, one city in 1 Samuel chapter 3, um, the Bible says that it was rare um, in those days for people to hear from God. Um, times were toxic, and, and there, was, there was a heaviness that engulfed the entire nation. The nation was divided because people weren't listening to God. The people weren't following God. It seems like what happened back then where the nation seems to be divided, where there is a heaviness hanging over us, where the people aren't listening to God, but they are listening to the news media. They're listening to Fox 6 News. Y'all ain't saying that. They, some of y'all know more about what's going on in the P. Diddy case. Did you know what God said? Can, can, can I tell you something? I ain't scared of now one of y'all in here. In verse 1, let me go. In, in, in verse 1 of 1 Samuel chapter 3, the Bible says that there was a little boy in the temple named Samuel. Um, he ministered as, as, a, as a mentee of the priest Eli. And, and the Bible says that, that their allegiance to a holy God has them both attached to the house of God. And check this out. If you want to hear God's voice, you ought to make sure you get in God's house. Samuel and, and Eli were living in the house of God. They were in an atmosphere that made it conducive for them to hear what God had to say. And if you're writing something down, write this down. Number one, number one, your environment is essential if you want to hear from God. Come on, man, this is a little Sunday school lesson. Your environment, somebody shout environment. Your, your, your environment is, is essential if you want to hear from God. Now, now in, in, in context of the text, Pastor Hollis, at, at, at that time, the Bible says that the word of God was rare. It was precious. There was no revelation being given. And check this out. But the voice of God could be heard. You, you, you listening. That's why you're helping me preach. Okay. The voice of, there was no widespread revelation. There was no information, but the voice of God could be heard, but it could be going forth in the house of God. Tell your neighbor, the environment is essential for you to hear from God. Your environment. Okay, um, they, they, they want me to sit it in the lap. That, that wasn't good enough. Um, You can't expect to hear from heaven when you're hanging out in hell. How you going to hear holy things in an unholy place? Uh-oh. Tell, tell your neighbor, get in the right environment. No, no, tell somebody, get in the right environment. If you're going to hear from God, you got to be in the right environment. Can I push it? No, y'all ain't saying Y'all holding back. Y'all ain't. 
Pa Pastor Hollis, about, about, about six, seven rows back, they being a little stingy with their amens. So I'm going to come on this side. I'm, I'm coming back. I'm coming back. Can, can I push it? You can be in the wrong environment, and, and, and it causes you not to hear from God. Pastor Hollis, a couple of, couple of months ago, um, while searching the net, I came across a photo courtesy of the Florida, the state of Florida Department of, in, in the Everglades. And, and it was a, it was a picture of a Burmese python, but it had been split open. A Burmese python is in the Florida Everglades. He's not in an environment that, that would allow him to flourish. Yeah, okay, somebody see where I'm going. And in this photo, that Burmese python who's not in the right environment to flourish, he's split wide open. And Lady Elise protruding from his mouth was a seven-foot alligator. And I'm wondering, I'm wondering why is this Burmese python first outside of a natural environment, and how in the world did he think he could digest something that wasn't no good for him? I'll tell you why, because he was somewhere that he had no business being. And whenever you are somewhere you're not supposed to be, you're gonna take on things that might end up costing you your life. Tell somebody your environment is essential if you want to hear from God. The Bible says, the Bible says that, that, that while, while Samuel and Eli are in the house, um, Sam, Samuel is asleep in the sanctuary, and Eli is sleeping in his normal place in his bed. And while they're both sleeping, the Bible says Samuel hears Samuel. Samuel. And what does he do? He gets up and he runs to where Eli is and says, hey, you call me? And Eli said, no, boy, I ain't call you. Go back in there and lay down. So he go back there and lay down. A few minutes later, Samuel. He jumps up, ran, ran to where Eli was. Hey, you call me. Here I am. And Eli says the second time what he said the first time. Hey, boy, I didn't call you. Go on back in there and sit down. A few minutes later, Samuel. We read that together. And the Lord called Samuel what? A what did he do? The same thing he did the other two times. He did the third time. Hey, Eli, you call me? Hey, boy, do you see what time it is? Oh, yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. It, it's kind of like you sleep in the It's about 3 o'clock in the morning, and Allison come running to the door. Okay, and he says, you call me? No, I didn't call you. But then watch this. The Bible says Eli realizes something, that Samuel m must be hearing things. Oh. <laughs> and he tells him, hey, this time I want you to go back in there and lay down. And if you hear it again, I want you to say, hey, Lord. Speak, your servant is listening. Tell your neighbor, you got to be in the right environment. Say it again. You got to be in the right environment. You got to be in the right environment for you to hear from God. And if you want God's concealed will, start obeying his revealed will. Ask your neighbor, do you want to hear God's voice? No, ask somebody, do you want to hear God's voice? then guess what? You got to obey God's voice. If you want God's concealed will, start obeying his revealed will. You want God to tell you something new, but you hadn't obeyed what he told you in the past. Okay. <laughs> you asking God, who should I marry? Oh, don't get quiet right there. You asking God, who should I marry? But God wants to know, okay, how 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 you doing with living a holy single life right now? 
You want God to enlarge your territory. But how are you with managing your money right now? You standing up talking about money come to me. But you don't tithe. You don't pay your bills on time. Yeah, yeah, oh, y'all, okay, oh, oh, you got choir right there. It's amazing, Pastor Hollis, that we want God to rain down on me. Yeah, yeah. We want it, we, we want God to give us what's right while we give him what's left. You, 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 you want God to give you a, a bunch of money, but you haven't been a good steward over that which he's already given you. Let me, let me help you. I'm trying to move on, but you're getting quiet at the wrong time. What, 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 whatever's in your pocket, whatever's in your purse, if you pull it out, it ain't got your name on it. It might be in your bank account. It might be in your investment portfolio. But the name on it says, in God. We, okay. the, 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 Eli, e, 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 Eli had, had grown dull in him hearing the voice of God. But you got to stand again that your environment is essential if you want to hear from God. Now, 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 Pastor Hollis, I've heard you say it, so it's worth repeating. There is no wasted ink in the Bible. One city, why, why, why did the author deem it necessary to note all of these nuances about this exchange between Eli and Samuel? Say it again, Pastor. Why did the author deem it necessary to note all of these nuances in this exchange between Eli and Samuel? I'll tell you why. Because Samuel could have just gave us a story like, hey, God called me one night. I said, hear my speak. I'll do whatever you say. But that ain't what happened. Samuel lets us know that God took him through a process. Somebody shout process. Do you hear what the Lord is saying? Samuel gave us a process that four different times God called Samuel, and three times Samuel didn't even know that it was God. Tell your neighbor it takes a process. Tell somebody it takes a process. It takes a process. It takes time to understand what is God and what is not God. Is it God speaking or is it somebody else just trying to manipulate me emotionally? Is it God speaking or was it that burrito that I ate last night? Is it God? Y'all ain't saying nothing. Ask your neighbor, is it God speaking? After the third time, all of a sudden, Eli realizes that God is truly calling him. This text is to teach us, number two, your effort is essential if you want to hear from God. Somebody say, your effort. Say, say it again, your effort. What effort are you putting forth to hear from God? One day, a man lost an expensive watch while working in the ice house. The fellow workers, one city, joined in trying to help him find it. They combed every inch, Pastor Hollis, of that ice house, and they couldn't find this expensive watch. A little boy who heard about it, he waited for those men to go to lunch. He went in the ice box, and a few minutes later, he emerged with the watch. When the owner and the men heard about it, they came and found that little boy. They said, tell us how you were able to find that watch so easy. Can I tell you what he told them? He said, listen, all I did is I went in the ice house. I closed the door. I laid down quietly on the floor. And all of a sudden, Y'all ain't saying, every now and then, you got to make an effort. You got to do something different than what everybody else is doing to make sure that you hear from God. Tell your neighbor, put forth an effort. 
you got to get up and do something to make sure that you're going to hear from God. If you keep doing the same thing the same way, you're going to keep getting the same risk. How do you expect to see something different when you keep doing the same thing? Oh, y'all ain't saying, I'm going to park right there, Pastor Hollis. I'm trying to go. Can I tell y'all this? All men ain't dogs. The men should have said, amen. Hold on, hold on. Stand up, brothers, in this house. Every man in here, it's Father's Day. Every man in here, stand up and say it with me. All men ain't dogs. Now, put some bass in your voice. All men ain't dogs. Get these men a hand. All men ain't dogs. Sit down in the presence of the Lord. I love y'all. Tell your neighbor, all men ain't dogs. Let me ask you a question, sister. Why every man you catch is a dog? All men ain't dogs. You just may be the best dog catcher in Nashville. Y'all ain't saying nothing. If you keep doing the same thing with, the, with every man, then every man will keep getting away with the same thing. Oh, no, he didn't. Yes, I did. Okay, let me get back over here. They don't like me today. They don't like Tell your neighbor your effort. Tell them again, your effort is essential if you want to hear from God. Where is your effort to hear from God? Do you go through the word? You can't say God is not speaking when your Bible is closed. If you want to hear from God, Open up your Bible. Tell your neighbor, look into it. Learn from it. Live by it. If you want to hear from God, look into his word, learn from his word, and live according. Oh, y'all. My, my, my Bible says that it's a lamp unto your feet. So you, you went to vacation Bible school like I did. Yeah, you did. You a vacation Bible school, baby. The way you scream that out, you got a vacation Bible school certificate in your purse right now. I know you do. If, if, if you lonely, go through the word. Jesus said in Matthew 28 and 20, Lo, I'll be with you always, even to the end of the world. If you're worried, go through the word. Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer. Anybody know their Bible? By prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your, tell your neighbor, pray about it. If you want to hear God's voice, just simply go through the word. Romans 8 and 28. And we know. Not some things. Not, not, not a few things. But all, okay, if you want to hear from God, go through the word. Your effort is essential. And right now, Pastor Hollis, you can attest to this, that there are a lot of churches in, in this world that are changing the scripture, trying to say God's word is outdated, that it's boring, and, and it doesn't work anymore. You hear people saying, well, the Bible is just a fairy tale. It's full of a bunch of these and thous and hitherto's. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. But guess what? I believe God's word, and I'm going to stand on God's word. A lot of people are denying scripture, but if God said it in his word, then guess what? I believe it. Tell your neighbor, I believe it. Um, uh, uh, real, real quick, um, little girl um, went to school that Monday, and they were talking about mammals in the ocean. They had just learned about Jonah in the Sunday school lesson. And, and, and she raised her hand and told her teacher, uh, ma'am, Jonah was swallowed by a great fish, something like a whale. And the lady said, well, babe, I'm sorry. Um, according to the measurements of the whale's mouth, it would be just impossible for him to swallow a whole human being. And the little girl said, well, the Bible said it, and I believe it. 
And when I get to heaven, I'm going to ask Jonah. And guess what the teacher said? Well, trying to be a little smart ass. She said, well, what if Jonah went to hell? The little girl said, well, when you get there, you ask him. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, I believe the word. <laughs> Tell somebody, I believe the word. Okay, okay, okay check this out. Um, um, if you want to hear from God, your, your environment, your environment is essential. Your, your, your environment is important. Not only your environment, but also your effort, okay? But then lastly, watch this, number three. Um, um, yo, yo. Oh, Lord, have mercy. It, 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 it ran across before I could. And, it, okay. and, 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 and number three, watch this, yo, execution. Tell somebody, you got to do what he tells you to do. Your execution is essential if you want to hear from God. Um, see, see, the difference is um, between, between hearing and listening, I'm trying to go, um, is, is watch this. Hearing is a sense, like touch. Smell, sight. Come on, you know, you know your senses, don't you? Hearing is a sense, but listening is a skill. Hearing is involuntary. If your ears work when the sound waves hit your eardrum, it's involuntary. But guess what? Listening. Is implementation. Hearing is one thing, but listening is something totally different. Y'all ain't saying that. And a lot of people don't know how to listen. Slide your feet back. I'm coming down your road. I don't want you to say I stepped on your toes. A lot of people are not listening to receive and retain, but they listening to respond. A lot of people ain't paying no attention to what you got to say. They just waiting they turn till it's their time to speak. But to show me that you were hearing and listening is going to require some action on your part. I'm, I'm done. I'm, I'm, I'm done. That, 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 that's about to go. I'm done. Watch this. Watch this. Um, the Bible says that Samuel wakes up that fourth time, tells the Lord, here I am, speak to me. And the Lord tells Samuel, I want you to go and tell Eli that his punishment is on the way. I know what he did by not punishing his sons, allowing his sons to desecrate and defame the house of God, and there's nothing he can do right now. Why? Because he failed to hear the voice of God. The Bible says Eli, uh, Samuel wakes up the next morning, and he, he dreads going in there to tell Eli what the Lord has said. But Eli tells him, whatever the Lord told you, go, go ahead and tell me. Don't suppress it. Don't, don't, don't sugarcoat it. Just tell me exactly what God told you. And even if somebody might not like it, even if you might lose some friends, you must obey and do what God, y'all ain't. Execution. Tell your neighbor, just do it. That's not just for Nike, but that's for God, too. Tell your neighbor, just do it. You got to do exactly what God tells you to do. Your execution is essential if you want to hear from God. You can hear God's audible voice. You ever heard God speak to you? That, that wasn't rhetorical. That should have been responsive. You, you, you ever heard God speak to you? You can hear God's voice. You can hear from God through his audible voice. You can hear from God through angelic visitation. 
and you can hear from God through an anointed vessel. I'm, I'm done, Pastor Hollis. Um, in preparation for proclamation, um, two things happened that were very powerful. One city. Yesterday, um, you all don't know it, but Pastor Hollis is the oldest of my three boys. Um, I have three sons. Pa Pastor Hollis is the oldest. And his, his, his younger brothers and I were traveling um, from lower Alabama to Nashville yesterday. And, and we made it to the Thomas household. And while we were sitting there and the kids were running here and running there, and I had got my little granddaddy hugs in and they was going back playing with their cousins. And, and, and Lady, Lady Thomas is sitting there doing her sister's hair. And, and she, she says, Ava, nothing happens. Ava, nothing happens. Ava Marie Thomas. You know you're in trouble when you get the whole government name, don't you? Ava, nothing happened. And it was almost as if that last Ava was, I know you hear me, girl. Oh, y'all, y'all like, you ever had your mama do like that? Hey, come in here. You coming up? Yes, ma'am, what you want? Pa pass me the remote. Mama, it's right. That last Ava was, I know you hear me, girl. But why was that last Ava so aggressive? It was because she knew her child heard her but there was no execution, there was no action to prove that Ava was listening. And a lot of you, a lot of you, you hear God, but your actions don't show that you're listening to God. One more, one more, one more. While we're in the back getting ready for worship this morning, Pastor Hollis is sitting in the green room, um, and the barber was there just, you know, lining them up, getting them right. I said, boy, you know you something else, ain't you? I'm going to be just like you when I grow up. I'm going to get my hair cut for church. But, but, but as the barber was getting the size and I'm talking and his two younger brothers are talking, the barber's talking, the clippers are... <laughs> But then Pastor Hollis's face went blank. His head kind of elevated and his eyes closed. I said, son, you about to change the intro of my sermon. He said, what do you mean, pops? I said, you, you were hearing things. Your focus changed so that you could pay attention and listen. The praise and worship were practicing. They were going forth here. And, and he heard something. And it caused him to act that would prove that he was listening. I'm done, but, but, but check this out. Um, I got to say this. M m many of you, many of you are like me. You love God and, and God loves you. But there are many times in your life when God is silent. Come on, this ain't no time to just act, act, come on. It, has there ever been a season in your life when God was silent? Where you prayed and asked him and you heard no answer? I can handle it better if you're going to tell me yes. I can even handle it better if you're going to tell me no, because at least now I know. But it's hard in that waiting room. What do you do when God is silent. Can I tell you something? I, I discovered one city that the same six letters that spell silent, if you rearrange those same six letters, they'll spell listen. And can I tell you, because because I think you, I think you, I, I, it, I mean, I ain't like that. Oh, the prophet, the Lord told me to tell you. 
I got members of my church that should be at church right now in Alpine, Alabama. I got members of the church I pastor who are in Nashville, but they should be at our church right now. I ain't going to call none of them out. Don't y'all start looking around. Don't you? I, I, and why didn't I tell y'all? Because because my members will cut you if you say something bad about me. I didn't want you to know somebody was sitting by you that would have stabbed you in your side if you said the wrong thing. But I'm positive because the Lord told me that you were really hearing that. A lot of times God is silent to make us. Oh, y'all been a little funny, but I love y'all anyway. A, a lot of times God is silent because he wants you to Listen, all over this house, stand to your feet. Come on. 